feel. Sir Finley Mergleton, now getting played on turn three from Red Baptism, has his choice between Reinforced Dagger Mastery and Lesser Heal. Goes with the Reinforced, the Paladin Hero Power. All right, matchup. probably the more relevant one in the Priest matchup. Neither one particularly ideal, but you're probably not looking for priest, um, the Priest Hero Power in this matchup at all. Yeah, and especially with Doomhammer, the, the Rogue one didn't look so good either. Right. So, yep, I like that choice. Uh, tunnel Trog now being drawn. Looks like he's just going to Tunnel Trog into Lava Burst. And also Lightning Bolt. I like uh, using all of this on one turn. If you're gonna if you're gonna start to kill it, you might as well finish the job in the same turn, because if you don't, uh, you know, uh, Circo of Healing might come into play, or you might right. just heal it up a little bit. But hey, Totem Golem is not that bad. Right, Red Baptism even gets a Totem Golem, which is probably the best job he could have gotten out of the the Dead Lord, actually. Yeah. Besides maybe Charge. Yeah, maybe an Argent Horse Rider or something like that, but right. yeah, Totem Golem looks really good here. Um, Excavated Evil, though, gonna do some work. Shuffling into uh, a Red Baptism's deck is also pretty bad because that's essentially a dead card in this matchup. You don't really want to draw into that. Um, and a very weak turn now from Red Baptism, as uh, he doesn't want to overload uh, by playing the Ancestral Knowledge, so... He's just going to be ready to Doomhammer next turn and hope it works out. Now we're going to see some Wild Pyromancer Acolyte of Pain combos go down the Flash Heal to give Frosty Dog 5 health back on his face. That's got to feel pretty good at this point. Your opponent's board is clear. You're at 25. The question is whether or not this Doomhammer is going to be able to put in enough work for Red Baptism to pull this game out. Alright, so Red Baptism might think about killing uh, the Pyromancer here because if he wants to play the Feral Spirits next turn, uh, it's really weak to Nova if he doesn't kill the Pyromancer. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, opting to go just for face there uh, with the Doom Hammer. Doesn't really want to use any of his damage on these minions i mean i can respect that maybe next turn he will like you said deal with the the pyromancer that way holy nova doesn't destroy him which uh yeah holy nova would be really really powerful in that in that scenario rosty dog just deciding on how he wants to spend his turn i honestly think it would be fine just to play cabal shadow priest here get a four five on the board um you could also play north shark cleric as well I don't think it's worth it to save it for the value when you already have Holy Nova and Shadow Word Pain as two ways to deal with stuff, and you just want to get some damage on board. So I would like to see him play the Shadow Priest, but wow, he's going to play Holy Nova instead. Wow. I, mean, I feel like he's going to he's gonna regret that when the, the Feral Spirits come down, but again, he is in like a really commanding position right now with the, with the board control as well as 23 health going pretty late into the game already. I mean, that way he gets some more cycling done uh, and he saves the Cabal, but I would have preferred getting more damage. Um, I think either way, it, it still works out pretty nicely for him. So, Personally, I don't really see a point in killing the Cleric right now because, um, well, honestly, if he's healing the Cleric some more, he's not healing his face, right? Yeah, and he's already drawing plenty of cards, so I would have also liked to see the attack for four on face. Just stick to the plan. Um... You know, just try to win that way because I don't think you're going to win a value game um, against Priest. So I would have liked to see the Smork play. Right. Uh, maximum. I think if you, if you already started with a Smork play, then you, you got to stick with the plan. Yeah. Yeah, value is not going to work out, uh, I think, in the long run. Like against these mid range Priests, the value game is in their favor in most matchups because they can steal your stuff, they can kill all of your stuff. Um, yeah, it's just a really good game for them when you're playing that. But Argent Horse Strider does come into play now for Red Baptism. Two damage to Frosty Dog's face. And a Jesticar True Heart is going to be drawn. Uh, as if the game wasn't looking good enough yet, Jesticar True Heart being able to heal for four makes it look that much better for Frosty Dog. And he's not even, even going to play it yet. I mean... 
he has plenty of time, I think, uh, to play that card. So I can I can understand not playing it yet. Don't need to play it right off the bat. And right. with the second flash heal, uh, we're gonna see Red Baptism loses Horse Rider to the Pyromancer, and Frosty Dog's gonna be in a really commanding position here, especially with this Lotha. Uh, yeah. There's not a lot that Red Baptism can do here. Yeah, this game is just way in Frosty Dog's favor now. Um, I mean, I'd say this matchup is pretty good for the, the Priest in general, especially with Akanai Circle of Healing combo. Uh, you've got a lot of days, a lot of ways to deal with Shaman's early game. And you've got a lot of heals for later on. As we've seen, he's got two flash heals in his deck, as well as a Justicar True Heart. So this matchup, I think, was very lopsided in his favor from the start. Right. I'm just going to see a Flame Tongue Totem into a, a Recruit. And I think this is close to lethal damage. Um, yeah, it is lethal damage with the Akanai Soul Priest heal or just a Holy Nova. That works too. Uh, so that's going to be Frosty Dog taking game one for University of Wisconsin over Michigan. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and now that's going to be the priest out of the way for them and the shaman out of the way for Michigan. Those classes can no longer be played by their respective schools. Yep, I agree completely. Um, next up, it's going to be Dorman representing University of Wisconsin versus Mr. Kibbles uh, from University of Michigan. Players just deciding on what decks they want to play, any modifications they might want to make before going into game. Um, a solid choice would probably be Druid or Secret Paladin or maybe for maybe for University of Wisconsin they could bring out their own Agro Shaman. But looks like the players are in game now. Alright, another golden rogue being played tonight. I mean, when it comes to rogue, it's it's nice to see that they are golden with their class because Rogue, like I've said before, takes a lot of experience, a lot of patience, um, and a lot of skill to be able to play correctly. And it's actually a Malagos Rogue that's been getting more popular lately, I think. Uh, Frozen recently had success with this in a, a tournament, uh, a Malagos list that he did well with, I think. Or actually, that was a freeze Malagos list. Right. I definitely but love I, seeing the Malagos list though. They're they're pretty entertaining. When you see when you see just like an opponent get killed from thirty health. I mean not exactly fun and interactive, but takes but some again, takes some planning to set up combos like that. Yeah, it takes a long, long time. I mean at that point in the game, uh having a finisher that takes like however many cards, uh, I mean you can deal like thirty damage, but that would be like with six or seven cards, so right. a lot. Wisconsin on the Secret Paladin, and we have Mr. Kibbles on Rogue. Yeah, and depending on the start from the Secret Paladin, I think this matchup could go either way. Also, if the Rogue just has an insane hand. Right. Um, so, in the Malakos version of the Rogue, there there tend to be less or fewer mid-range threats, um, but more healing. So, typically, it plays double heal bot, um, if I'm not mistaken, and. Um, so their game plan is going to have to focus a lot more on removal um, to build until they can cycle enough uh, into enough of their combo pieces. But uh, luckily for Mr. Kibbles, he does have the good start here. He's got the backstab as well as the SI to help him contest the board. Yep, looks like a, a very solid opening from the Rogue. I think these cards are like exactly what you want to see besides the Malagos. I mean, he's just hanging out, but uh, it'll be useful later probably. Um, Muster for battle being played now for Dorman. I'm just going to go face. 
seems completely all right to me. He's got the true silver next turn if he wants to use that to deal with the SI agent. He would miss out on a few charges from the Light's Justice, but oh man, this fan of knives value. Yeah, that is that is ridiculous. That is one of the cards that um, sets Rogue really, really ahead in this matchup. Um, right. If you have your turn three muster, like I usually don't even keep muster against Rogue as a Paladin player because Fan of Knives is just such a good counter to it. Right. Well, you get to keep your Lights Justice, but that's not doing very much in this matchup. I mean. Right. Essentially, you play you played a three mana Lights Justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But gonna replace that with the true silver champion now. Kill off this SI agent, and Dorman doesn't have a whole lot going on, uh, right. either on the board or in his hand. I mean, these three secrets right, it's don't gonna really be do pretty much. Pretty rough moving forward for Dorman. Um, unless he can pick up a big threat here, and he picks up another secret, so he can actually play every one of these secrets if he wants to. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to see every secret except competitive spirit and then make a 1-1. One -one. Right, I agree. I think that's, I think that's oh, the best you can do. Redemption is a little bit questionable too because you don't, also don't want to get the 1-1 one -one redeemed. Yeah. Yeah, or the or the Noble Sacrifice. So you could just play Avenge, Noble Sacrifice, and make a 1-1. One -one. Right. Looks like that's what he's going to do. But man, this is the rough part of Secret Paladin for sure. Sometimes you just draw a lot of secrets, you don't draw your Mysterious Challenger, and you get put in a pretty rough spot. I also like Mr. Kibble's choice last turn to just dagger up, take his time. There's no need to rush this. Uh, like, you're a Malagos deck, uh, so play to your Malagos and use that to win that way. Okay. So it looks like he's gonna go for the backstab SI here. Um, choosing to save face damage instead, um, just using the outside to finish up the 4 3. Yeah, you get the 3 3 in play. It'll probably just die to True Silver Champion, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, Blessing of Kings now. I mean, you don't really wanna make a 1 1 and Blessing of Kings it because Sap exists. Uh, and that would just completely nullify your Blessing of Kings, but. I mean, maybe Dorman goes for it here. Like, you've got to do something as the aggressor in the matchup. You can't just let every turn go by. So even though that could potentially punish him, I don't really think he has an option at this point. Um, maybe depending on what he has in his deck, he might um, do something different. But I don't think making a 1-1 one -one is good enough. Yeah, I, I like using the Blessings, even though he's going to get punished for it. So... Azer Drake drawn now for Mr. Kibbles, but hmm, Sap just looks so good. All right, the Sap is gonna look really enticing here. It looks like he's gonna go for the Drake. Let's see if he preps out the Sap. He's actually gonna prep out the Abyss. I like this too. Just deal with the threat right now, and save the Sap for maybe a bigger threat like Boom or Tyrion. I don't know. I might have liked to save that Abyss for the face damage because Sap does actually like deal with the threat i mean it deals with the blessing uh and you have two saps so i don't know i actually would have liked to see the the sap there instead but it, it could go either way i mean there's there's a few reasons why you'd rather hold both saps so power to shredder redemption is he gonna make a one one no he will not he is he is clearly telling his opponent it's a redemption but then again you know that that in a way protects your power to shredder, makes it so that uh, Mr. Kibbles can't really deal with it however he would like. Um, because another one would just get summoned, and you don't want that to happen. So maybe we'll see the sap get used here. As uh, he still has two, like sap plus both of your cycle cards, I think would be good because you can draw into preparation, into Therison, into something else to set up your Malagos. Wow, it doesn't play anything. I would have at least liked to see the Shiv um, just to cycle it, but... I mean, he can stop the Challenger. Um... Sapping a challenger is actually not bad. I think sapping challenger is a little more ideal than sapping something like boom because you don't get the multiply boom bots. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, hmm. All right, we're going to see the trade now. Blood Mage Thanos. I mean, that's not too bad. Could could definitely use some draw to get to something like Tyrion or Dr. Boom, another big threat. Um, but yeah, wow, Dorman has a lot of secrets in this deck. I just noticed, uh, even though he drew four at the start. Okay, so he has Repentance He's as actually well. playing the five secret version because it allowed him to play the Comp Spirit there, right? So he actually doesn't have a Comp Spirit up. It's kind of uncommon these days to see the five secret version of the Secret Paladin deck. Most people only play four. Some only play three. Yeah. I personally like the three version the best uh, because I think, I don't know, I don't like having as many secrets anymore. Everybody knows what all the secrets do now. Everybody plays around them. So I would just have the three. Right. And having so many just increases your dead draws, which is not so good. Yeah, it potentially makes your Mysterious Challenger more powerful, but instead of playing those secrets, I could just play more powerful cards anyway, which is what I do, but to each their own. Everybody has their own list these days. Right. So. And the event landing on landing on the Challenger is really great for Mr. Kibbles here, so you can just sap off the Challenger here. Yep. Clear the board completely. Yeah, it's doubtful that it'll get any more secrets. Maybe there's one left. I don't think so, though. So yeah, Mysterious Challengers at this point are essentially just 6-6s six for 6. Um, which isn't the worst. I mean, <clears throat> Rogue can still have uh, a difficult time dealing with the big minions depending on what spells are in their hand. Right. So, um, actually if Mr. Kibbles wants to play out the Malagos next turn, um, unless Dorman picks it off with his minions, I don't think he has a Good way to take care of the Malagos, right? He could set it go for a two-turn lethal here. Yeah, uh, I don't think he has I... enough damage yet, though. He pays up an abyss, which is gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot. So it'll be close, but um Yeah, I wouldn't want a Malagos yet because Blessing of Kings or True Server Champion could deal with it. Right. Um so yeah, I would just like to see him deal with the board a little bit. Uh maybe start with Azur Drake. And then go from there. Unless he's got something in mind here with Tomb Pillager, he could Tomb Pillager into some spells, get the coin up. Uh, but I don't think the coin's going to accomplish a whole lot yet. So he could ship off, ship off the 2-2 two -two and potentially just sap the challenger again. Oh, and that's actually, if I heard about the Repentance, if we played the Malagos here, he would have gotten really punished. Oh yeah, that too. I forgot about it as well. So he's actually going to choose to use um, the Abyss to pick up to pick off the Challenger. Yep, and this is not a very good competitive spirit, although at this point in the game, you can't really expect it to be that good. Right. And even, Dormy even picks up the second monster for battle here. Yeah, which is actually really nice. He gets to kill off this Azur Jake. He can play the power to Cheddar and make another 1-1. One, one. Both Fan and Knives are down. Uh, Blade Flurry is like the only thing that can deal with this. Most Malagos uh, rogues play two Blade Flurries, though, I think. But, right. Yeah, he's already got one in his hand. Right. Unfortunately, he can't play both the Malagos and the Blade Flurry. Um, so he's gonna have to choose one or the other this turn. If he plays the Malagos, does it die on board? So he's got 7 plus 5, it does die on board. So playing the Malagos here doesn't seem that great. Yeah, I would actually just like to see both Tomb Pillagers and Blade Flurry, because once both of those die, you get the two coins, you get your Malagos, you can Sinister Strike into Shiv for lethal damage next turn. Right. Oh. Okay, he's not using the Blade Flurry. Okay, I mean, this works as well, as long as he doesn't die. Which, one uh, card? This is going to be... So it's not quite lethal. I believe I counted 12 last turn, so with the True Silver, it'll be 13. I think it's actually 15. Ah, 15. 8, um, because Pilot of Cheddar and right. True Silver. Oh, wow. Mur Murloc. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Bluegill Warrior. These coins are going to be so crucial for Mr. Kibbles here, though. Yeah, I think he can just end the game on this next turn. I I kind of understand holding on to the Blade Flurry now. I guess there's a low chance you die 
In the case of something like Divine Favor into some damage cards, though, I think he could have gotten punished for it, but not a whole lot of play people play Divine Favor. Um, I was actually going to get the heal for two off True Silver, so maybe it's not lethal anymore, but then again... Um, was it lethal without it? Because he only he only has um, two coins, right? So he can do one of the two mana spells and one of the one mana spells. So Sinister Strike is going to be eight, right? Along his dagger is nine, so he would need to do another nine damage. Eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit off. I mean, he had Shiv, too. So he's going to go for the flurry here, just take control of the board. Yeah, and for sure. Probably might as well uh, coin out the Sinister Strike here. The way you could get punished by this play is um, if Dorman happens to play uh, either Iron Beak, Owl, or, or even... Or Divine. Divine Favor. He would have had two more cards to draw. Right. And potentially could have drawn some crazy stuff. I mean, he could have gone like Divine Favor into Iron Beak, Owl, into... Even, uh, even if he had gotten, like, Keeper is the most punishing thing here, I think, because he clears your board and you have no Malagos and probably no win condition after that, even if you spoke oh, yeah. this. Yeah, for sure. Keeper of Old Man would have been awesome to draw. I mean, I think it, regardless, it's still looking really rough for Dorman. Or actually, like, you know, if he drew that, I mean, this way, as we see, he's, he's dead on board. I don't think there's anything he can do. Um, right. But... Yep, we're just gonna see him make that last attack. Get get the two more HP, and he's just hoping he survives. But as we know, Mr. Kibbles has plenty of damage. Even has some gadgets and auctioneers to go with it. And uh yeah, that's going to be a win for Michigan. That's ties up the series now, I believe. Alright, it's gonna be a win for Michigan, and uh we'll be bringing it'll be bringing uh Michigan to one one. Um, so next up, we're going to have Nikki Cage, 22, versus Orion Mango. And the classes that have been used for the school so far, um, University of Wisconsin has played their Priest and their Paladin, and University of Michigan has played Shaman and Rogue. So I'm trying to think of things that you could play. I mean, I guess Druid is a little safer to play for University of Michigan now that Secret Paladin is out of the way. Um, Secret Paladin is one of the matchups you definitely don't want to run into with Druid. So it seems like a fine time to play that. Uh, it's it's interesting. They brought two exotic classes in their first games. They they played Shaman and Rogue, which are two classes that we don't see as much. I mean, we see a lot of Shaman, a, f a fair amount of Shaman, but right. I guess Hunter would actually be more exotic than Shaman these days. But... Right. <laughs> I mean, we've already seen what are what were considered to be the three most unpopular classes for a long time, right? We already saw Rogue, we saw Priest, we saw Shaman. Now, yeah, we just need to find a Hunter here. <laughs> yeah. Hunter would, uh, would round everything out. It seems like every class is being played besides Hunter, which is so strange. Hunter used to be, like, the most powerful class for so long. It was always at the top of the, the tier list and the ladder and everything, but... Falling off, um, Hunter is like an endangered species these days. Not extinct, but uh, you don't see it very much. Right, it's just that the shaman has taken over as the dominant aggro class, and with things like with things like Reno and Healbot, it just makes the makes the hunter's job a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially if you're just straight face hunter, you just hope those guys don't draw their heals. Which sometimes they don't. Sometimes that works out. But yeah, um, the players are just deciding on what decks they would like to play for this game. <clears throat> Tough choices here. I mean, I would still like to see the Druid from Michigan. Uh, not sure what University of Wisconsin could play. Maybe they'd play their own Druid or their own Shaman. Um, something along those lines.
All right, looks like the players are in game now. All right, we're ready to hop into our game three. So it looks like it's gonna be. Mage. <laughs> nice little rhyme. And Orion Mango is playing Warlock. All right, and it looks like this is the classic Reno lock. It's got Stalag in his open hand. I can only assume Fugan is in the deck somewhere, along with Zombie Chow, Siphon Soul, um, a few other things. And on Nikki Cage's side, looks like a Tempo Mage with uh, a Flame Strike. Uh, there's a Mana Worm, Mad Scientist, Mirror Image. Yeah, it definitely looks like a Tempo Mage deck, but it's got Flame Strike in his opening hand, which does not, you know, he doesn't really want to see that. I think. Right, so it's like a Tempo Mage with some with some tech against Swarmy decks. Uh, it's really good against stuff like Patron, Zoo if you fall behind, but a lot of times it's considered too slow against those classes because if you lose board that late in the game, it's a little bit hard to come back. But um, it can be a really good tech choice. I like it in I like it in some metas. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's better against the aggro decks uh, and Patron. Of course, it's it's nice to have Flame Strike against Patron if things ever start to go really bad. Um, but yeah, we see the Twisting Nether from Orion Mango. That's something that's, you know, you see that every so often, not in every list. Uh, but yeah, this turn three looks solid for Nikki Cage. He's got Flame Waker or Mirinity. Hey, so I'm curious if Nikki Cage plays two secrets in his deck, because it looks like he's a little bit hesitant to play the Mirinity here. Yeah, I mean... It's definitely possible he's only playing two mirror entities, but either way, I think the yeah the best play here looks like trade into Flame Waker because it'll probably be pretty difficult for Orion to kill it right off the bat, uh, especially since he just used a Mortal Coil. Um, you know, this is a Reno deck. It's not like he's gonna be playing two Mortal Coils, but uh, yeah, no Dark Bomb Mortal Coil to deal with this. All right, so he's gonna get a copy of the Imp Gang boss. Nikki Cage, which is decent for Nikki Cage. Um, the Imp King boss is actually a little bit awkward for him to deal with. Looks like he's gonna choose a straight up fireball it here. Um, yeah, because that's... again, the pings from the Flame Waker, you don't really want to be giving your opponent too many more one ones than you need to. Yeah, and it fits on curve too. I, I definitely like that play. Um, Reno Jackson. I mean, nice. Not not bad. <laughs> not bad to have. So actually, looking like a really solid curve for. For Orion here, also he doesn't need to play doesn't need to play the Reno on curve most likely because he's not under that much pressure. Um, but he's gonna have the Hellfire to deal with deal with Nikki Cage's board here if he wants to go for the mirror images. Yeah, which is possible. Um, so I think I mean, he might be looking to dump his whole hand here. Yeah, yeah, and maybe the Twilight Draco gets sniped four times. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, even if it doesn't, you don't need to kill it. You could just go face since you have the two taunts in play. Uh, okay. I guess There's you... the fear of Shadow Flame. Yeah. Yeah, so he'll probably end up trading, but oh, it's just so awkward. You end up with like very little pressure. This is one of the costs of playing Flame Strike in this deck. For a matchup like this, it's just not going to do very much. Like, right. You would rather have more ways to extend your lead rather than a board clear because like Reno Lock isn't really going to have any good boards to flame strike. Like maybe sometimes, but not really. So, right. <laughs> yeah, this game it's is the problem with run running flame strike in tempo decks because usually you're not really in a position to be able to use a whole turn to clear a board. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a great game winning card for the more aggressive decks, for the patron decks and stuff, but against control decks it doesn't really do anything. So Yeah, it definitely has its its cost in that aspect. But then again, he did get it in his opening hand. Uh I assume he probably only plays one. So that's just a bit unfortunate there for Nikki Cage. Um and this game is looking really solid right now for Orion Mango, as he can just loath up here. It will get copied. Um, I guess he could be a bit concerned about his life total, but then again, he's got Reno Jackson, so... Great. 
So, Nicky Cage has the option to go all face here. He's got to be thinking about Reno a little bit here, though. So, I can see a trade coming um, on the Lothan. And just keep pushing face with the other minions. It's just something you have to be conscious about. You don't want to throw all your minions into face and then get really punished by Reno. Um, on the other hand, if Orion Mango is going to Reno next turn, he also can't remove the Lotha because it's going to be 6 mana. Yep. I would actually like to see everything hit face and ping the Lotha because you've got the two taunts in play, you've got a Flame Strike and not really much else to do. Right, you could potentially set up for the Flame Strike next turn. Yeah. Um, and even though Shadow Flame could punish you, I don't think you can afford to play around Shadow Flame at this point. Like. Right. And he's actually right? going to send the ping to the face here. So, um, Orion's gonna have to Reno here, or he's dead on board. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really think there's a way around this. Like, you, you should also be concerned about Fireball and other burn spells from your opponent. So yeah, I think you, you really have to Reno. He's just making sure, though, I think he's counting up, making sure, uh, he doesn't miss anything. Right, and I can see how, why um, Nikki Cage wanted to send the ping to the face here because it does set up lethal, um, regardless of whether Nikki Cage. Um, well, it sets up lethal on the condition that Orion Mango doesn't have a healer taunt, but yep. as we know, Reno Reno is in hand. Yeah, and I mean, as a tempo mage player, you you just gotta do that kind of stuff to win. Like, you can't really play for value at this point. You just need to set up lethal. Hope your opponent doesn't have it. And, uh, yeah, but... Uh, Ryan Mango, really making sure everything's good here. Maybe a bit of a slow roll. I mean, <laughs> as, the, as the Temple Mage player, you're like, okay, he probably doesn't have it if he's thinking this long. <laughs> and then, last second, Reno Jackson comes right. down. Surprise, I, Reno. <laughs> I mean, I understand. Like, you're, you're taking your time. You want to make sure you don't mess up. Um, right, so this is probably as good as your, your flame strike is going to get here. Unfortunately, he manages to miss picking off both of the minions, so he's going to have to send in the 1-1 one, one here. Probably just go face with the others. Yeah, I mean, he's got a taunt up anyway. Right. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is a really uphill battle. He's going to need an awesome unstable portal, I think, to be able to take this one. Unstable portal into Ragnaros. <laughs> Yeah, Ragnaros could be really solid. Um, there might be too many targets, though. Hmm. Yeah, maybe if the Ragnaros just ends up being eight damage to face, and then he can so draw another burn spell. So we can spell. we can get a King Crush instead. <laughs> yeah, King Crush would work out too, I guess, if you're going for the maximum burn. But... All right. So what do we have from from Orion Mango's side here? He's got a couple options. He can play Boom. Um, he can go for the Nether, which seems kind of overkill at this point. Um, I think Boom seems fine to me here. I mean, it dies. It dies on board to the minions, but um, if it's taking care of a Flame Waker and a Little Dub, you're really not upset by that. Yeah, I like the Doctor Boom. I think maybe he was just counting lethal possibilities, but um, I think Doctor right. Boom is the play to win. Just get something on board that'll keep you on the board and right. uh, save surviving for next turn. It's like you're going to need board presence at some point to win this game. You've got your Reno in play already, so you don't have that to fall back on. Right. Uh, so I think, I actually think Nikki Cage should probably go for the Drake first here. Um, unfortunately, he can't. If he happens to pick up a fireball off the Drake, he can't also cast it on the boom. So the boom looks like it's here to stay this turn, if he decides not to trade. Um, but he could Azure Drake into a Frostbolt, maybe? Yeah, that could potentially be pretty solid. And Water Elemental is not going to do it, so he's going to have to go for the the spell damage here. Um, the Flame Waker pings on using the other spells. Good sequencing, attacking first in case the boom boss happened to snipe off one of your minions. All right, that's pretty good Flame Waker. And uh, let's see how this one goes. And both wow. go into the boom. All right. Obsidian Destroyer. <laughs> pretty decent pickup. The wannabe Dr. Boom. Uh, <laughs> better than War Golem, but uh, I guess it's not neutral. Hmm. 
actually not a not a terrible pickup. A little bit weak to BGH, but um, but or Orion doesn't have one in his hand right now. Um, so Orion's in actually kind of a tricky spot here. He he can nether and lose his whole board, um, but he does know that Nikki Cage only has two cards in hand. He's not sure what he got from the portal though, so he doesn't realize that Nikki Cage actually got a pretty good value minion from the portal. Yeah. I might just like to see Hellfire. Yeah, I think you could Hellfire and try to kill off the other minions with your Boombots. If not, you can also Demon Wrath. Yeah, I think he's got to do something soon though. This is not the turn to be roping off again. I right. Mean, just gonna go to the Twisting Nether. <clears throat> Doesn't leave him any board presence. It does guarantee the full clear and a little bit of damage on face from Boombots. Six is definitely above average. Uh, not bad. Fireball being oh. drawn. It's pretty spicy. So it's gonna be this is gonna be a lot of damage for for Nikki Cage here. I think I actually would have liked to see the Hellfire come out last turn because you could get a full clear. Um, at worst case, you have to use your Demon Wrath too. Versus a board like this, I guess you're not really expecting a board with so much health like this late in the game from Tempo Mage, but pressing another would be better in this case. Yeah. Yeah, that that would have turned out better. Um, but there's probably a few other things that Ryan Mango was considering when it came down to it. But uh, yeah, now he's definitely got his back against the wall. He can't play Sludge Belcher and one of these other big threats like he would like to. If he had one more mana, he could. But... Right. If he had another mana, Emperor into Belcher would have been really great. Or even Sylvanas into Belcher. Yeah, I would have liked the Sylvanas for sure, just to ensure that you take control of the board. But yeah, he, he just has to taunt now. Um, doesn't really have a choice. Depending on how these trades go, Hellfire could be a full clear on this next turn. Okay. And maybe maybe Nikki Cage is out of secrets for Mad Scientist. This could be the turning point. Alright, chooses to Fireball. Yeah, that's actually way better than trading. Keep your Obsidian guy at uh, 5 health instead of Instead of less. Both fireballs are out of the equation, but Orion Mango needs a way to survive this turn. Lord Jiraxis. Jiraxis. This is actually not gonna do it though. Yeah. And then he could draw and he healbot, would that be enough? Brand Bronzebeard and T Healbot heals. A lot, but his max health is 15. And then there would be stuff on the board to deal with. He's going to choose to tap first, which definitely seems like the right decision when you have the coin. And I mean, yeah, you just have to Jaraxxus. Oh, he just concedes. Maybe he oh, was one off. Yeah, yeah, should have gone for it. And I think I actually would have liked to see the Jaraxxus hero power there to at least help you have a chance to fight for board. Yeah. But, um, um I mean... I mean, it was looking pretty dire because uh, Nikki Cage also had the water elemental, so it would have just get, gone frozen as well. Yeah, it's unlikely that Orion wins that anyway. Um, so, I, I mean, I understand the concession. But, uh, yeah, I also agreed uh, with you that if you are going to Draxus, you coin out the hero power, have a chance at having board. But, yeah, so either way. So it's going to be Wisconsin taking, uh, Wisconsin taking game two of the series, bringing them up to one. Now they have a one game lead. Um, they're gonna they're gonna need Lignin to take this win up against Darkhawk. Uh, that way they could close out the series. Then they would be 3-0 this season. Not too shabby. Um, so the classes that have been used now. Uh, we just saw um, Wisconsin's Mage. So that's Priest, Paladin, and Mage out of the equation for them. And Michigan has now used their Shaman, their Rogue, and their Warlock. So the schools can no longer play those respective uh, classes. All right, we'll be getting ready for this next game in just a couple moments. All 
as we are getting ready for that, once again, I would like to shout out to our sponsors, of course, Twitch for um, sponsoring the CSL and featuring our matches weekly. We're proud to be affiliated with the largest gaming stream provider in the world. And we would also like to thank Asus ROG. Asus is the presenting sponsor of the CSL this year. They make some of the world's best gaming PCs, laptops, and monitors. Asus is also funding this season's Travel to DreamHack and our prize pool for the year. Be sure to follow their social medias like at Asus underscore ROG and thank them for sponsoring the CSL. And of course, if you miss any matches, you can go over to youtube.com slash cstarleague. Under the CSGO section, you can find all the broadcasted matches that have been streamed. Of course, also be sure to go over to Twitter and follow at CSL Hearthstone, as well as go over to Facebook and check out Collegiate Hearthstone. Give us a like on there too. We would appreciate that, as well as uh, following our streams uh, twitch.tv slash cstarleague and twitch.tv slash cstarleague2. Game 3, getting ready to begin in just a few moments. The players are selecting their decks. Alright, so we're going to have A. Tucker subbing for Lignan on University of Wisconsin side. Um, going against Dark Darkhawk2000 of Michigan. So looks like we're just about ready to get started here. The players are queuing up. Yep, a few subs happen... Uh throughout the season. I mean, sometimes people are just busy with different things. Uh, that's life, you know, definitely understandable. Um, we'll see if A. Tucker can actually close out the series for his team. And the players are in game. All right, so if A. Tucker manages to take this game, it's going to be match point for Wisconsin. So it looks like A. Tucker is going to be opening up on the mid-range Druid and Darkhawk on the Secret Paladin. It was definitely expecting to see the Paladin uh, at some point. I mean, you have to play it at some point before your team goes out, right? Uh, and hopefully this pulls out the win here. Matching it up against the Druid is, you know, I mean, Druid is always scary, but I think it's one of the matchups you do like to see as the Paladin deck. You'd rather see it instead of Patron Warrior or Freeze Mage. Uh, either of those classes do some good work against Secret Paladin, but no turn one play here from Darkhawk. Uh, Actually pretty common with Seeker Pound, and although you would like to have something like an Avenge or a Seeker Keeper, just something to do. But the rest of his hand looks decent, so probably no complaints from him. Looking over at A. Tucker's hand, he's got a Wild Growth, the Coin, and Innervate, as well as a Piloted Shredder and a Keeper of the Grove. He's got a lot of options for how he wants to play this game. Um, I would like to see just a pass this turn, and then next turn you can Wild Growth, you save your coin and your innervate, and you still get a turn three shredder or keeper, depending on what uh, what the board looks like. Right. I don't think coining out the growth is necessary here. Again, your curve is going to be really sweet if you can if you can growth into keeper, but he's going to choose to go for the kind of aggressive route here. Go for the coin coin innervate shredder instead. I <coughs> excuse me. I think this works out too. I mean, next turn you have either the growth or the wrath. Yep. Yeah, I think this works out completely fine. Um, against an aggressive deck, I like these aggressive lines where you coin innervate the Shredder. Um, instead, he's going to Wrath this turn instead of Wild Growth, which makes sense. You don't want the Knife Juggler to just trade. He also drew a Shade to fill in this next turn uh, instead of Wild Growthing. So you right. can save the Wild Growth for a more dead turn or something. I mean, he's already got a few things to do to fill in his mana curve. Right. This is actually going to be really good for for A Tucker here because this Shredder might even be able to get in 12 damage, which is pretty insane. Um, Darkhawk does have the Call Camera coming up, but he's looking at punching the Shredder preemptively, which is kind of interesting because he's going to end up taking 12 damage from the Shredder now. Um, it could be really punished, especially if A Tucker had a swipe. Yeah. 
Yeah, that I guess actually this is what um, Darkhawk is preparing for. So in the case that Atacker does have a swipe, he can equip the Cog Hammer to finish off the Shredder. But still, you're taking a lot of damage that way. Well, I guess another thing, uh, Atacker was only on three mana that turn. Uh, right. So unless he had another Innervade, because we did see him use the coin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that, sense, uh, that play made sense. Uh, and we're going to see him use his face a little bit more, but... I guess it's necessary to deal with the board. You're, I mean, this is like turn four. You're not, you're not exactly concerned with the combo yet. Uh, although, wild growth could accelerate it to be one turn faster at some point. Uh, we've already seen an innervate use, so I guess that's not too big of a deal anymore. There's another one in there somewhere. Right. Um. So this turn, you're gonna be thinking about about using the wild growth here so you have a couple of plays i think the darn ass is going to come down here um but then your other option is whether you're going to hero power or growth i kind of like the growth a little bit more um it puts you to six mana it can allow you to keep her in hero power or something next turn if you need to yep. actually with the darn asses it will actually put you to seven but i'm assuming that the darn is going to get picked off by the mini bond here yeah but either way, it seems like an okay turn to just get your mana accelerants going. Um, even if it is just wild growth, um, your darn asses aspirant helps simplify the board a little bit, even if that is just killing off uh, a divine shield and a 1 1. Although he could have used his weapon to kill it, but I guess he doesn't want to be at the magical number 14. But there is a shade in play. Um, so maybe I would have liked to see him take the face damage instead. But. All right, Atacker picks up the Force, which is not going to be very useful right now. But um, getting the Keeper here on the Haunted Creeper is actually going to be really good for him. He's able to take care of the Taunt, Divine Shield, as well as the Death Rattle. Yep, I agree. Um, Redemption is going to be the secret in play now. So that's a bit annoying, but Mysterious Challenger would have put it in play anyways. And we see the full five. Come up now, so okay. We have both sides, both sides um, today actually going with the five secret build. Yeah, I mean, gives you the most powerful mysterious challenger, but the more inconsistent draws a lot of the time. Um, right. But five secrets is definitely necessary here if Darkhawk wants to pull out the win. So. A Tucker is actually going to be very close to lethal in the coming turns. I actually would prefer to see the Drake hero power come down here. Um, actually, not even necessarily hero power this turn, because hero power is actually not going to get through to the face. Yeah, I, um, I wouldn't go it, for the attack. It actually, so it puts a little bit more damage on the board, but it actually sets up lethal for next turn. Um, with the shade and force of nature hero power, so I actually do agree with this. You're not in danger of dying right now, and unless um, Darkhawk picks up exactly another Noble Sack or Taunt, then you have lethal. Yep, that is true. So yeah, I, I think that play makes sense now. Just going ahead and proc in the secrets. Um, I and mean, that you are is gonna not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you Ooh. are going to take a lot of damage on the swing back, but it does basically guarantee lethal from your side. Right. So Darkhawk could still pick up a Noble Sack here. He's got one more draw for it and doesn't get it. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So now all A Tucker has to do is uh, try to figure out what the secret is by attacking with his face first. And then, or actually, he might be a little scared. If he goes to hero power, he won't be able to heal off of Ancient Lord. But I guess he could still trade. Hmm. Right. But the heal wouldn't save you in this position anyway, right? Um, with the Calm Spirit. Yeah. So... So I think you got it. You have to go for it. I'm pretty sure you can assume that you're dead next turn if you don't win this turn. <laughs> yeah, I think the best way to do it is force and attack with one of the two twos. Because you're going to need to do that in either scenario. And uh, then you're going to you're gonna be short of damage if you attack with a two two, though. Oh, uh, well, I was saying... Uh, well, it, as in if you had a Noble Sack, you'd be short anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was saying attack face with a two two. Yeah. Like, uh, if you if you force the nature attack face with a 2-2, then you can figure out if there's noble sack. Like, this way, 
if it ends up being something else, uh, if it ends up being double sack and you can't use your wrath, then I think he is dead. Maybe he was dead either way, though. I didn't do all the math, but... Right. Yeah, regardless, but... I mean, that's going to be A. Tucker taking the win 3-1 um, for University of Wisconsin. Now they're 3-0 this season. Not bad at all. Yeah, all right. So, well played by University of Wisconsin. I think that the interview shorter play was really good call on his part. Uh, getting in 12 damage that early in the game was really, really strong. Let him finish off the game with just, like, force of nature and not even needing Savage Shore. Also, that 6-6 six, six shade did help a lot. <laughs> yeah, and another thing was um, he had the Wrath to back up his piloted Shredder as well, so even though the Knife Juggler came into play, um, he could just deal with that with his Wrath, keep his piloted Shredder at full HP, right. and kill stuff off. Right. So yeah, that was a, a pretty good match, I would say. We did see a 3-0 and a 3-1 tonight. No games, no matches going to 5, but that's just the way it is a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, good games to all the schools that played. Once again, we would like to thank Twitch for sponsoring the CSL, featuring our matches weekly. We are proud to be affiliated with the largest gaming stream provider in the world. And Asus ROG, who are funding this season's travel and prize pool, uh, travel to DreamHack, that is, for playoffs um, for the top teams. They will be traveling to DreamHack Austin. Um, when the time comes, be sure to follow their social medias like at Asus ROG and thank them for sponsoring the CSL. Um, of course, we'll be back with Hearthstone on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, you can check out our schedule below for the other matches uh, and games that I mentioned throughout the broadcast tonight. Um, so yeah, with that, we would like to thank you for tuning in for another great week of Collegiate Hearthstone. As always, we'll be back um, on Wednesdays and Friday of next week like i said um, as we get further along into our spring season follow both of our twitch channels to catch all the csl action including csgo tomorrow at 4 p.m pacific on our first channel c star league um yeah we'd like to thank you guys again for watching that's all for me uh, my twitter if you guys would like to follow me is at root nomodogan on twitter and uh, channyland anything else you'd like to say any other shout outs or anything uh, that's about it. Yeah, good game tonight from both both teams. Uh, both schools did really well. And um, yeah, you can find me at HL underscore Chandyland on Twitter, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya.